Hey residents of Meeple Town, this is John, and today we're going to be doing a play-along video for the about-to-be-released Tiny Towns by AEG. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to play Tiny Towns, and then I'm going to invite you to play along and probably destroy me in this game. Um, but I'd love for you to post your scores down in the comments, so let's just have fun with this. And by the way, if you've been enjoying the Meeple Town videos, we completely invite you to join Meeple Town by clicking that subscribe button, even hitting the bell to get notified for when we're putting out new videos, but let's just go ahead and let's start playing Tiny Towns by AEG. All right, Meeple Town, meet Tiny Towns. In Tiny Towns, we are mayors of these woodland forest creature Tiny Towns. So we're gonna be gathering these resources to put them onto our board that will allow us to then use the resources to build these buildings. And of course, the person who has the greatest town configuration is going to win the game. So we are going to be doing the town hall variant. Now this is slightly different from the main rules. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can all play along together. Um, normally what would happen in the base rules is someone would be the master builder and they would say, for example, stone. And then everyone would pick up stone and place it into their tiny town. And the next player would say wheat and then everyone would pick up wheat and place that into their tiny town with this rules variant we're going to use these cards in order to actually select which resources we're going to be gathering and you know what i actually think i might like this variant better anyways so i'm excited to show this to you so what will happen in this is we're going to be selecting um resources so we will flip a card over all right, and we will all pick glass, which is blue, and we will place it into our tiny towns. Now, when you place it into your tiny town, it has to go into an empty spot. So if there was already a resource there, you cannot place, <laughs> it just fell off. You can't place a resource, or if there was a building, you cannot place into the same uh, spot as that building. So you have to place it into a completely open spot. That's the first part of the turn. The second part is if we have any of these configurations on our board with resources, then we can build these buildings. So let me give you a quick example of what that looks like. So let's just say that I had a gray and then we flipped over and got wood. So I already had stone and then we get wood and I decide to place it right here. Then I can build a millstone so I'll grab the millstone building token. I will remove the resources that I had and I will pick one of the spots from where the resources were to put my millstone in. Now the cool thing about this game is kind of tetris -y, and I really like that, is that you can put these resources, they can be in any orientation or mirrored different ways. So what I mean by that is a chapel does not have to look like this, which is identical to this, to uh, what this has right here. Actually, that's not identical. What am I doing? That would be identical to what this is right here. You could have it reversed. So for example, that would be like, that would be like mirroring it that way. I could have it a different um, orientation. So I could do it like this. As long as they're in the same order, you see, we can actually build it. So it just, the order matters, not the orientation or mirror or flipping them. So again, very much like Tetris, which is really cool and it's really neat. So I also wanna make mention that um, the points are gonna be scored based on the buildings that we put in. And I will go over each and every one of these buildings very briefly before we get started so you know how they're scored. But also for any empty spots you have on your board at the end of the game, you're losing a point. And that excludes resources. So if we have a bunch of buildings on our boards and we have resources and whatnot, I'm not going to fill my board up here, but at the very end of the game, we're actually going to remove all of our resources. So those are going to count as empty spots. So the only thing that remains are our buildings. All right. And so that's pretty important in the game uh, not to have a bunch of empty spots here. Or you're going to score again one negative point for each empty spot. Now, the final thing we're going to do before we start playing Tiny Towns is we're going to be selecting our monument. And so what happens is everyone gets two of these monument cards. And then you select which one you want. So I randomly drew these, completely randomly drew these Meeple Town. Uh, and you're going to pick which one you want. You're either going to pick the Sky Baths, which reads, you get two victory points for each building type 
um, your town is missing. So um, if you want to focus on one or two building types, you could score a lot of points that way because it's for each type that's missing. Or you can do the archive of the second age and go, that's kind of funny, go exactly the opposite, which is you get one victory point for each unique building type other than your monument in your town. So you're going to select one of these two and you're only able to build one monument over the course of the game. And you can build that monument at any time. There are monuments that actually, there's a big stack of them, which is really neat. There are monuments that have immediate bonuses, but here we see that there are two monuments that are going to give us in-game scoring, which can be very, very beneficial. I had to monuments and I selected my monument and I don't have to show you all what that is, but it doesn't matter um, with the town hall variant here. So let's go over each of these buildings and then we'll start playing tiny towns. Okay, so the last thing we'll do before we get started is very briefly go over these buildings. I'm going to skip this cottage and I'll tell you why in a second. So every bakery that we put in our town, we're going to score three victory points if it's adjacent to an orchard. You can see that symbol there or our bank. We're going to score two victory points if, if any of our millstones are adjacent to an orchard or a bakery. We're going to score, I'll wait, let me pause on the chapel as well. We're going to score down here in the almshouse, super interesting. Uh, it depends on how many almshouses we have in our, um, in our tiny town, but we're going to score one, negative one if we have one, or two, five points if we have two, negative three if we have three, 15 if we have four, negative five if we have five, but 26 if we have six, high risk, high reward, it alternates negative and positive point values. Pretty cool. The bank gives us four victory points, but what happens is, is when we construct the bank, we're going to put the bank on our tiny town and then select a resource. And now the card reads that whenever we do that, we can no longer as master builder call out this resource. But since we're doing the, the, the town hall variant, it's a little bit different. So what will happen in this variant is I'm going to flip over one card. We'll all put that resource on our tiny town. I'll flip over a second card. We'll put that resource on our tiny town. Then for the third, we are going to choose any resource we want. But if you have a bank, Whatever resource you have on here, you cannot choose during that time. So on that third uh, part of the round, or the third round, we cannot choose glass if we have glass on our banks. But our banks are worth four points apiece, so that's a decent amount of points there. So uh, let's talk about the orchard, the cottage, and the chapel, because they all work together. The orchard card reads that all buildings that have this symbol, which right now is our cottage, it feeds all those buildings in the same row and column. So the same column and the same row as our orchard, meaning if I have a cottage, again, in that row here or in that column, it's going to feed them. And that's important because the cottage says it gets three victory points if this building is fed. So since these are both fed because they're in the row and the columns, they're going to score three points each. If one of them was over here and I didn't have another orchard on my town, it would not be worth any points at the end of the game because it's not in the same row or the same column. Now, the chapel says that it's going to give us one victory point for each fed cottage. So if I have a chapel over here and I have two cottages that are fed, I get two victory points. So pretty simple and pretty straightforward. I love how this game is very quick uh, to teach and very quick to just to kind of jump in and start playing. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let me just shuffle these one last time real quick. The first thing we're going to do is remove the top five cards. One, two, three, four, five, and create a discard pile. Love that. So you can't count resource cards. And then we're going to flip over the first card. So the first card is going to be glass. Therefore, everyone needs to pick up glass and put that onto their board. All right, so I am going to place mine right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and let's just rock and roll. Let's pick up the next one. The next one is brick. I'm gonna try not to go too quickly um, so that you can take your turns. And I'm also going to leave the previous card here as well. So I'm gonna do that so that you can see. So remember that to the left is the previous card and to the right is where what we are currently on. And that way um, we're able to, if you're a little bit behind, you're able to still uh, play and make your choices. All right, so now that it's the third round, we get to pick any resource we want. So. I 
You don't have to select what I select. You just pick whatever you want. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select wheat so that I can go ahead and grab a cottage. And I'm going to place the cottage right here. All right. So we did glass, we did brick, and then we chose whatever we wanted. So that is the first three rounds. And so as you can see, particularly with this uh, variant here, the game can go fairly quick and I like how it moves along. Now it's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole lot more thinky as the game progresses, no doubt about it. And we begin to fill these boards up because you cannot, and I can't remember if I mentioned this, you cannot move a resource or a building. You can't move them. They're there. They're stuck. And the game is going to end when the boards are completely full or you decide that you're out. So let's do wood here. I'm going to put wood right there. And then for the second card, we have wheat. All right. For wheat, I'm going to slide it right there. And then we all, for the third round, are going to select what we want. So I'm going to select wheat again since we just drew wheat. Maybe we won't get that one again. All right. So just to go a little slower, we're going to say we went wood. We went wheat and then we selected what we want. All right. Let's move it along. And stone. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. All right. So I'm going to place my stone here. And as you can see, I have the configuration so that I can do an orchard. I'm going to pick up these resources and I'm going to put the orchard, put it here. Now, I think I'm going to put it right there in the middle. All right, so stone was the first one that we did. And then as you saw for my the second part of the move, I built the orchard. So let's go ahead and flip over the next card. And we are going to get stone once again. All right. I'm going to place it right here. I think. No, I'm going to place it right here. All right, so we had two stones in a row and then we pick whatever we choose, what we want. So I'm actually gonna pick stone again the third time. And you all pick again, whatever you want to pick. So stone, stone, and then whatever choice we decide ourselves. Now we're gonna do glass. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Exactly what I wanted. So glass and then Another glass, yes, all right. I did not set this deck. This is actually working out really well, but I promise you it will balance out over the course of this game and I'll probably end up getting a bunch of cards that I don't want here in a minute. All right, so I have the configuration for a chapel. I'm gonna grab my chapel and I can place it again in any of these spots. I'm gonna place it up here in the corner, I think. Well, it's gonna stop me from getting that, isn't it, if I do that? If I go down here, it's not going to stop me from what I want. Yeah. Okay. Not sure if that's the best move or not, but I'm going to put the chapel right there. I think. Yes. Being indecisive here. Okay. I'm going to place a chapel there. All right. So glass, glass, and then whatever we want. So I am going to then choose. I think I'm going to choose. Ooh. Maybe I'll choose glass again because I don't know if we'll draw one of those. All right. So that is another three rounds. So glass, glass, and then whatever you choose. Now we're going to go brick. Let me grab my brick here. I got to remember what my monument is so I do that correct. So I save space for my monument. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put my monument. I'm going to put the brick right there. And then we're going to flip and get wheat. I guess if I would have put the brick there, I could have built a cottage immediately, but that's okay. And then we choose what we want. I'm going to choose stone. I'm going to place it here. This building, these monuments often take up a lot of space. So you really got to plan them out. Uh, brick, wheat, and then your choice. And then we're going to now shuffle these cards. And after we shuffle them, we're going to draw five more out and then keep playing. All right. So we are shuffling these cards. 
And then we're gonna take five out again. One, two, three, four, five. Those five, we're gonna start our discard pile. And then let's keep playing Tiny Towns. All right, so brick. Okay, that's fine. I will do brick and I will build another cottage. So let's take these off. And I'm putting the cottage here so that I can be in the same row as my orchard. All right, man, now it's gonna start getting pretty thinky as to what I decide to do. Ah, okay. I put the wood there, not exactly what I wanted. But man, this thing gets pretty thinky pretty quick. It Again, that's what I do enjoy about it, that it's, it's really simple to teach, but especially when we start getting buildings here, they get pretty thinky. You know what, I should be laying these down so that y'all can see these better. Let me do that. All right, so I picked stone for my third one. So we had brick, we had wood, and then I chose stone. You choose what you want. All right, this is getting tricky now. I hope they give me what, ah, wheat. That's not what I wanted, is it? No. Yikes. Wow. I have messed myself up in this game. You're gonna stomp me. This is not good. Not good at all. Place a wheat right there. Yes. Okay. And then we're gonna do brick, which is not what I wanted either. Yikes. Um, see now that now the turns are taking a little bit longer because I've got to think this through. Okay, I'm gonna place the brick right here. And then I'm gonna choose, so finally I'm gonna build my monument by choosing glass for my third thing. And I have the Grove University and it says that I get three victory points, but I also immediately place a building on an empty square in my town. So I'm gonna get a, I guess select any building and put it in my square, so if I place it there, it's gonna block that. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the monument there. I'm gonna return these, and now here's an interesting decision that I'm gonna have to make, and that is what building do I want to choose? So I could do like another orchard, that wouldn't be terrible to give me more chances to build cottages here, or I could put another chapel and keep, that could be worth a lot of points kind of at the end as well. I think I might do that. I think I might grab a chapel and then put the chapel here because that won't hurt me as bad, I don't think, some of these other spots. And yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Now it's starting to get pretty risky though. So wheat, brick, and then choose your own. We have brick again. I'll take brick. That works for me. Put that down there. Come on, give me something good. Give me what I want. That'll work. Okay, so I can take, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna build a millstone with that and make it adjacent to my orchard. So it'll be worth two points at the end of the game. And then now that we did brick and we did stone, now we choose. Okay, I'm gonna choose glass so that I can go ahead and grab this. I'll turn these in for another cottage and lay that cottage here in this, in this column so that I can score for that. Alrighty, so that was brick, stone, and then choose what you want. Let's go next is glass, which I just chose, but I'll put glass again and I'll put it there. Whew, it's getting tricky now. And another glass, that's what I'm afraid of. Because now, I don't know, I can actually, yes, that might work. Eh, if I build one almshouse, it's going to be worth negative one points. Maybe I should have built an almshouse here and then tried to get another one so that I could score five points. So I know, based on these configurations, I'm not going to have much of a chance. I'm not going to really be able to use this because I don't want to build an almshouse. Um, 
I don't. And there's really, unless I'm just not looking at this right, there's really nothing else I can do because, again, we cannot move the buildings. Um, so with that being said, I could build a millstone here. I'm just going to put it in this spot right there. And then for my third choice, so we did glass, glass, and now I'm going to choose wheat. And now that I have chosen wheat, I'm going to place another cottage. And I have now realized boneheadedly that, I, oh my gosh, what am I thinking? I can't place the cottage in a row. I'd have to build another orchard, which is just impossible for me to do right now. Wow. That, I, that could be, that's probably some, that's some of the poorest thinking in this game. You, I don't know why I was, I was thinking I was going to do something earlier and I just, I forgot that I needed to put that other orchard. That's what I should have done right there. Wow. That really stinks. Okay. That being said, I am going to duh, just place it down here. I mean, the one positive is it's going to have a spot filled up on my board. So it's not going to, uh, it's not going to block something. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, terrible playing. I'm going to lose miserably. So glass again, which is not going to give me anything. Wow, this is bad. And then stone. The only thing I can really hope for now is getting stone and wood so that I can build some millstones because I've only got these two spots now. So not good. Stone. And then, of course, for my third one, I'm going to choose this brown, which is going to, yes, get me a millstone. And I will place the millstone here. The problem is they have to be adjacent to this one or this to score points. But I would rather have millstones covering spots than have resources, which is going to give me negative points. So even though I won't be able to get adjacent to this again to score points, I'm going to be able to maybe fill up some of these spots. So one, two, three, four, five. This is a bad score. Ah, oh, stone, man, I, that was lucky. So I just need, at least I can fill up a spot one more time. Glass, I'll just throw the glass right there. And then for my third one, I will choose wood, which allows me to build one more millstone, but it's not adjacent. That's okay. At least it covers another spot. Wow. I don't know if that's really okay, but it covers another spot. So we did stone, we did glass, and then we chose. And if I'm going a little quick, obviously feel free to click pause. All right. So now I really can't do anything but place these uh, resources on my board. So I could just say I'm out, but I'll place the resources on the board and I want to keep flipping some cards because obviously you all might be much better than me and still actually playing the game well and, and, and having some opportunities. So we're going to do brick here and then we're going to do stone. And so my board is full. I am out of the game. Now that we've done brick and we have done stone, you are able to choose again what resource you want. Now, a lot, there may be a lot of folks out of this game, so I'm not going to go super slow here. I'm going to, so please just press pause. We did brick, stone, and then they chose. So the next card is going to be wood, because I do not want this to drag out and everyone that's waiting to see the score and is calculating their scores uh, be irritated about how long this is going. On the flip side, I don't want people who are still playing to, to be irritated that we didn't go through the deck more. So we're going to go wood, wood, and then choose another resource of our choice. Okay. Again, hit that pause button. Wheat. We're going to go through this deck right here. Wow. All right. So double wheat and then choose one of your resources. Finally, we're going to do stone, and then, oh, if I could pick the card up, wheat, and then choose one of your resources. All right, so now I'm going to grab the scoring pad, and I'm gonna score mine, and, I would, and then grab your scoring pad as well, and uh, score our tiny towns. 
All right, so let's score these bad boys. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna look for, and we're gonna look for our banks, and I don't have any, so I get a, a blank there. Then I'm gonna look at my cottages, and the cottages, again, are scored three points if fed. So I actually need to go ahead and remove these. I guess I'll remove those, even though we'll score that here at the very bottom, but let me remove those to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. All right, so these three are fed. This one is not fed, so I score nine points for those cottages. Whoops, not three. I was looking at three cottages, nine points for those cottages. Then the chapels here are gonna score one point for every fed um, cottage, so I have three fed cottages, so this will score three, and that'll score three, which will get me six. Wow, this is gonna be a terrible score. I get nothing for that. For I get nothing for the bakeries. I didn't build any of those. And then the millstones are gonna give me two points if it's adjacent to this, so I get one and one for this. Two points for this one, two points for this one, nothing for that, so that's gonna score me four. Then my university, some of these are gonna, monuments are gonna score, some monuments do not score. My monument scores three points. But then I'm gonna lose one, two, three, four, five, minus five. Um, wow, that is not good. Minus five um, for those empty spaces. So let's just calculate this up. Nine plus six is gonna be 15. I'm gonna go ahead and do minus five because that's easy math, which would give me 10. 17 points. Horrendous score, I think, Meeple Town. Hey, Meeple Town, thanks again for playing Tiny Towns with me. I had a blast, even though I'm sure you all completely destroyed me. I played miserably bad. But go ahead and put your comments, put your score down in the comments so I can see how horrible I lost. But you know what? Even though I did terrible, I had a great time doing it. One thing I want to mention before I end the video is I believe that I failed to mention that the building configurations change every single time you play the game because there's multiple of each uh, color of the card. So there's multiple buildings for each color. Again, that adds a lot of extra gameplay, a lot of newness to the game because it changes almost every single time you play. Again, if you had a, uh, enjoyed this video, if you enjoy our video, subscribe to our channel, follow us on uh, Instagram, follow us on Twitter. And uh, I just wanna also thank AG for sending me a copy of this to play with you all. You guys are phenomenal. Thanks for coming down to Meeple Town. Thanks for joining us and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meeple Town Games and connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild Guild number 3407 at boardgamegeek.com and also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.